some of your favorite producers to work with? Uh, wow. I work with so many and so many different genres. Uh, so the new school, I like uh, C Note, uh, Honorable C Note. Um, Mike Will made it. Um, Sunny Digital, uh, Drama Boy, and his brother Insane. Um, I don't discriminate, you know, as long as they care about the quality of the music, because you got Fat Boy, you know, he was dope, you know. Um, I just kind of like the producers that like to make it in the studio. Okay. Uh, cause we as engineers don't technically have influence, but if we manipulate the sound to where they can hear more, they produce more, um, and then that makes it funner. So considering that you understand the plight of the independent artist, but you're running a business at the same token, a lot of people have taken the production process, the mixing, the mastering process into their homes. Mm -hmm. When do you think is the right time for an indie artist to book studio time? When is the right time to come into the studio? Uh, it's not just when you can afford it, when you are ready to get to that next professional level. Um, as a mix engineer, uh, I charge independence $2,500 a song. Um, and they can't afford it and they'll scrape up the money and I'll turn them down. I was like, you don't even have a hot record that's worth mixing. Why don't you take that 2500 and get you 10 great songs, get some momentum. And then the song that the crowd likes or the DJs are playing pay for a professional mix. Now, of course, that's contrary to making me rich, but that keeps me important in, in, in this industry where everyone's just got bills to pay or, 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 or they just want to be famous or, 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 or they um, don't understand that, you know, you tell a person the truth, you save them a little bit of money, you'll be the first person they think of when they get a lot of money. Now, do you said you have like a lot of favorite producers. Are there any like up and coming producers, and I'm quite sure you do this a lot in this business, that do not understand how to work with you as an engineer? You know, they, they may not understand exactly what to do. Is there some that you may, um, I would say, yes, mentor, or kind of try to school a little bit on, okay, this is kind of how I can, we can yeah. assist, you know, to kind of get them to understand, okay, you're now not just making your tracks at home, you're now bringing them in here to take yourself to another level, and this is the best way to utilize the scenario because you may not have formal training to understand it. Yeah, that falls back into our company motto where education and experience makes a sound difference. It isn't always that our staff is educated and experienced. We also educate our clients. You know, we're quick to tell a person after the session, uh, you could have mixed this two track better, this, that, and the other. This is how you do it. Um, and I remember when I first started doing it years ago, uh, someone said to me, but they're losing money because now they're coming in less. Uh, but the great part about it was there was more respect. Their production got better. They sold more beats. They got bigger artists. Um, secondly, they would go somewhere and someone couldn't educate them and they would think of us first. Well, that's Soul Asylum, so on and so forth. So it, it worked both ways. But yeah, we mentor, we educate our clients. We don't just take the money out of their hand. You know, uh, we lead them down the path and we teach our staff. All our engineers have to train under me for a year before we release them to a client. It's extensive training on production, engineering, recording, mixing, uh, customer service, studio etiquette, developing their ears, and we do the same with clients.